Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're having a pleasant and wonderful time. And welcome to the Ugly Truth Podcast with Sam Phoenixia, where I share the most ugliest truth to make your future a little more beautiful. Welcome to this podcast, everyone. On our prompt on Phoenixia Productions Instagram page, uh, we posted a series of topics on the story and uh this topic, uh, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, uh, won by 63%. The other topics were Auckland Ram Raids, Space Exploration, and uh, Amazon Jeff Bezos. But everyone wanted to hear about uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. It's still going on and uh, still trending. So um, I said, you know, let's grab that and let's talk about it. So Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I know that you guys probably know the background story, um, but I'm just going to give you a really, really brief one. Um, Basically, they met each other on a movie set um, and they were dating um, other people at that time. Um, After a while, once they separated, they actually um, started dating. um, And in 2015, uh, they married each other, kind of kept it a secret from the media for obvious reasons. But um, then they came out um, and yep. They announced themselves um, as a couple. Uh, Johnny Depp's mother was actually sick at the time. Um, So, yeah, just a little background story. Um, The whole court case with Amber suing uh, Johnny. Yeah, that is a... mm. (laughs) I don't know um, what was going on in her head. Um, Usually victims who are, well, literally people who are victims don't really want to stay with their um, abusive partners. Uh, They would rather separate, especially in a country like America with a lot of help um, available, um, police and so on. But I don't have much background into this. I did see some of the court videos and clips, but... Um, yeah, I'm not too informed, but luckily we have a caller on the line that actually can, uh, get us more familiar with this topic and tell us more. So we have Reed on the line right now. Reed, how are you? Hello there, Sam. I'm very well, my friend. And you? I'm really good. Thank you very much for asking. I hope you're doing good too. It's been a long time, man. Yeah, man. Uh- it's, you know, it's good to be here. Uh, thanks for inviting me. No worries, man. Thank you so much for uh, accepting the invite and welcome to the podcast. So, what do you think? What are your views on um, this whole uh, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp case? Could you tell us a little bit more about it? You see, you see the, the whole thing, it's its a social media nightmare in a way, to be honest. Like, um, I think it was a very smart move on Johnny Depp's behalf um, to do it in Virginia because in Virginia State, they have to record all court uh, court sessions. So even if, like, in the eventuality, if he lost, the truth would still be out there, which is what he really wanted to put across. Um, and honestly, he executed it very, very well, you know, compared to, to Amber's side, who, like, no offense to uh, all their lawyers, but it kind of seemed like she bought them off Wish, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I understand. It was just very, very she had very little substance to everything that she was claiming and um you know actual witnesses not just paid experts as was what she had when johnny depp had friends he had family come on and honestly the, the entire case she kept digging herself this massive hole and of course you know with the support of the fans we saw any of the videos outside every morning there were fans waiting outside they were cheering johnny on you know giving him gifts and then when Amber Heard would pull up, there would be silence or booing and people throwing, um, you know, slurs and whatnot. That's true. And um, didn't Amber Heard actually uh, change her lawyer, um, the, her, her team, um, in the middle of the case? Do, do I recall that right? Uh, she fired her PR team because naturally the social media was going awful. I am I know they weren't allowed to look at the social media, but she probably would, probably would have heard through the grapevine. Oh, yeah. No, everyone hates me. So she just completely threw out um, her PR team, especially just because of the headlines that were coming out about it, you know? Yeah, that was um, weird. I mean, uh, 
it, it, it is kind of weird because you can't really keep track when, when people are at home. Um, they have access to social media on different accounts. Then they don't actually have to actually go on social media. They can just go on Google and, uh, and just search themselves and uh, literally just Google themselves and find out what's going on throughout the day. So I think she might have done that a couple of times. Um, but I yeah, as you said, her evidence and the way she presented herself in court, she didn't really have too much um, evidence, did she? No, I mean, it's kind of the, that funny thing. It seems they were just kind of as bad as each other in ways, but um, from the sense of what she was actually saying about Johnny and what he had did, uh, uh, sorry, what he had done, it was just, yeah, it, it didn't match up and nothing seemed right about it. You know, she would be like, oh, he, um, I'm not going to say exactly what happened, but assaulted her in a very private area of her body with a bottle, which that is a pretty heavy accusation to make on anyone, not even just Johnny Depp, on anyone, you know. And um, the way she presented her evidence too, it was just crying, crying, um, and then she would just stop crying immediately once something else was said. Yeah, I noticed um, a couple of times that happened and um, you, you c couldn't really see tears unless she, like, she was crying full on snot and everything coming out. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and, and the whole thing with um, her mentioning a bruise kit and then correcting herself to a, a, a makeup kit, that was also a little bit interesting because she knew that if she said bruise kit, um, everyone would be even turning against her even more. So yeah, that, that bruise kit also got me interested. What did she say? Um, it was at the end, like a, a makeup kit or something yeah, like it, that. It was a makeup palette that they presented, and um, they're saying, you know, this is the exact makeup palette that she used on this particular date. But where they messed up there was that specific line of makeup. I can't exactly remember off the top of my head what it was, but they came out and said, actually, those dates are wrong because. Our makeup palette wasn't palette wasn't released till after, you know, the accused dates or whatever. Yeah, and it's so, yeah, uh, no, I agree with you on that, and it's weird because this uh, seems to be such a simple uh, thing not to get wrong, but she still got that wrong. Um, and it, when you don't do your research, if you would want to lie, not that we're really promoting anyone to lie, but if if you're lying, you got to do your research because it's not the truth. So you got to find out what you want to you know lie about. So I think that was a mess up on her part. Um, and yeah, it was just weird. I don't know why she would have uh, she would have not uh, researched when that makeup line uh, came to me. Maybe she just found it. Maybe she was just unaware. Um, but yeah, the whole makeup and the whole um, editing the videos because they actually got a specialist and um, who was an editorial specialist, um, like a forensic um, forensic editor or something like that, and they actually checked all the photos and um, found out that the photos, some of them were cropped originally um, and some of them were altered. So that was also interesting if you if you remember that part. Yeah, uh, it was two photos um, that she had said, you know, were different time dates of um, different bruises, but then they just sort of airbrushed them down and just saw that the photos were exactly the same. You know, she had the, the same hairstyle and with like certain curls in the exact same places, which just, you know, no one gets their hair exactly the same every day unless you're, unless you're Elvis Presley, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's true. I mean, if you look at all the pictures of Elvis Presley, um, yeah, no, it's all pretty much every date uh, is different, but his hair is still the same. God, he had such amazing hair. I'm always jealous, but uh, yeah, the whole the whole thing with um, the case, and I don't know. She already sued Johnny Depp before in the UK, didn't she? Uh, so it was it was Johnny Depp suing the uh, the magazine company, The Sun, um, because of like the the wife beater headline, which started all of this. You know, he would have probably just left everything alone, but then they came out and said that he was a, a wife beater. After um, Amber Heard had, uh, you know, filed for divorce and, you know, faked the, the makeup pictures, which we'll get back to that because that's regarding TMZ. So they brought that out. And then, of course, Johnny, no one wants to be called a wife beater, you know, in, in the public eye, especially, you know, of someone of his notoriety. So it was really, really messed up. So he, he was like, you know what, I'm going to sue you guys because that's not really that cool. And he lost. You yeah, know, he lost that suit. It's hard to fight media corporations in a court of law. 
Yeah, that is it's really hard. So and then um a few years later there was a a statement or um a what, what did they call it in court? Something that was released by Amber Heard that was kind of pointing at Johnny Depp but not referring to him, you know, with his name in the um in the either it was a statement or it was an article that a- Amber wrote. Do you know about yeah. that? Yeah, so it was the op-ed um which she mentioned, you know, the abuse that she suffered through, um, you know, different men and whatnot. And, but ev- everyone knows that it was focused on Johnny. And then throughout the, the case as well, she said, I, I didn't write that specifically about Johnny. It was just a, in general. And then she later admitted, that's why I wrote the op-ed. Quote. Yeah, no, she she hilarious. really did did the whole. Yeah, that's hilarious, and she did, she basically um, messed up her life uh, with that. To be honest, and uh, to be fair, in all trials and all everything, we as uh, outsiders we cannot really know what happened between two people or what happened to a person, even with a whole lot of evidence. We it's just we were not there, but the evidence that um, were provided um, to the court and. Uh, the cross examinations uh, indicated that uh, Johnny Depp was in fact a victim and not uh, the abuser, and it turned out to be the other way around. So, how was uh, Amber Heard's financial because um, financial situation? Because the latest thing I saw from Amber Heard was her shopping at a normal department store um, to what save money or trying to get some loan or something to pay off the fifteen million dollar uh, sorry dollar settlement that she owes to Johnny Depp. Now, is that right? Uh, there were photos of her shopping at TJ Maxx. Um, which I guess is sort of the equivalent of like uh, Cotton On or sort of a Kmart. Yeah, those but family department stores. Yeah, I, I mean, fair enough, cheap clothes and not all that bad, just made from some lovely children in a sweatshop probably. You yeah. know how it is with these big corporations. Exactly. But um, I searched up her net worth and it's like negative six million. You know, I, I, I don't know how you get to, to that low it's it's kind of insane you know how they can determine like actually you are six million dollars in debt or six you know negative six million dollars worth less i mean i probably have a net worth of like 23 dollars and boom i already got more than amber heard you know it's a good feeling <laughs> exactly and uh if you- <laughs> No, you did. You did bring a good, um, a good thing up with this. Um, yeah. So she, she, she owes fifteen million dollars. She's, she's negative six million. Um, and I, how do you think she's gonna pay off uh, this debt? Is she gonna try to get back into the industry or borrow from um, uh, someone? Because I'm sure she doesn't have any friends anymore. But the ones who are left, uh, do you think they will help her out with this uh, settlement fee? It's, it's hard to say. You know, like who's gonna come up and. And defend her and I, I bet she's probably gonna have a very hard time getting any um, movie roles I know they've almost practically cut her out of Aquaman too and for her to borrow um, more money from the government or any large bank corporation would, would just be foolish so it, it's quite interesting to see what step she'll take next in regard to her financial situation I mean she could she could start and only fans, and I'm sure it, it would probably kick off. Yeah, honest. it might kick off. But the last time I checked her uh, Instagram page was actually just an hour ago. Taika Waititi was still following her uh, among uh, several other uh, famous um, uh, actors, art, uh, artists, musicians. So do, do you think they're just following the Instagram just to follow? Or do you think they actually support her? Um, w- what are your thoughts in regards to that? that, that that's a... A tough one, you know, because uh, mostly celebrities probably don't care that much. Um, so I'd say it's probably following for the sake of following. And if they support her or not, you know, that that's their choice. Um, I used to follow her. I don't kind of remember why. Uh, but, you know, after hearing all the evidence, I was always sort of on the in the middle. You know, I didn't really know too much information to make my own judgment about it but after hearing all the evidence presented um you know i I went in with an open mind like oh this could swing either way for me who i support but after hearing you know everything i'm I'm a hard johnny depp stand now yeah i mean it's uh just uh i guess tragic you know to have a, a life 
uh, filled with uh, fame, um, fortune, and also, you know, to have people around the world love you and uh, support your work and then just um, in literally one snap of the finger, just throw all that away and uh, make anyone your everyone your enemy and put yourself in financial ruin. So it's, it's really um, tough. And I think usually with these kind of cases uh, in court, it's always the the male um, that gets you know, the accuser label um, uh, put on. Is that right? Um, and that's just a few cases that actually the, the male has won and, and turned out to be a victim. Yeah, uh, it's funny, you know, this whole uh, feminism side of it. Uh, you know, I watch videos on TikTok and uh, Facebook or whatever of a lot of feminists saying, you know, this is a sad day for women and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, uh, some guys were saying, you know, finally justice for um, men victims which in a sense is true but also it's just justice for a victim you know that like that swings past more than anything just justice for a victim in general like could be male or female you know for, for someone to actually win and get their truth out and be heard and listened to after being condemned about everything you know it's it was quite spectacular to see you know yeah i understand man so uh, in your opinion reed what do you um take away from the story and what do you think is the ugly truth about the topic uh, that the viewers uh, chose today honestly the ugly truth was how we all got wrapped up in that so much that everyone just forgot about what was happening around the world like in the ukraine and whatnot that is the interesting part to me of just how people will focus on one horrible thing happening and then something else that doesn't even compare, you know, like how does a trial of two celebrities match up to genocide, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. That's the ugly truth of it, of how wrapped up we can get in these people's lives that we don't even know. Yeah, it's heartbreaking, heartbreaking, and uh, especially to the people that we haven't even spoken with one on one. And we actually, do, you, you know, you might read books on them, you might uh, watch videos on them, but you never even spoke or met them in person. So it is heartbreaking that our minds just go and focuses on um, this uh, trial between two ordinary people. Um, and at the same time, in Ukraine and uh, Russia, there is a war, and millions of children families are torn apart uh dying on the streets uh, uh being bombed it's really devastating so i think you really actually um did highlight a very good point uh within this topic is that humans can get wrapped up in the most simplest um uh, you know issue and forget about the rest of the things that are happening around them um it, if aliens came to uh earth i think they would say hold up a f you know thousands and millions of your own people are dying and and you don't take any action and why is there even a war between your your species you're the same you know you're the same, you're the same species why would you have a war between each other i think that they, they would find it really really um stupid and they would really find it um tough to understand and they might want to wipe us out i don't know why i brought aliens in this but <laughs> it kind of made sense to me i mean from an alien perspective not that i have much um experience being an alien oh these yeah days, but, um, <laughs> Uh, this world would be the greatest soap opera ever or like this reality show this this would be prime time emmy winning stuff man the the tales of earth oh man i mean uh it's a whole thing but uh, i really want to thank you so much for uh, being uh, the first caller on uh, the Ugly Truth podcast, you've shared uh, a lot, and uh, a lot of all all of the things you shared were useful. I've learned uh, certainly a lot, and I'm sure all the viewers at home did. Um, and uh, I agree with you. The ugly truth is that um, we can focus on things that matter uh, very little, and we can forget the big uh, the big things. But uh, thank you very much for calling in, Reed. Thank you so much. Sweet. Thanks for having me, man. No, and no worries, thanks man. to all of you listening. Oh, cheers. Thank you very much, man. Not a problem. We'll see you around. Right. So that was Reed. And um, uh, he was, uh, his points were made perfectly. So I guess what we learned in this podcast, uh, the ugly truth is that we can always focus on the little things that matter and forget the big things that are happening to us, friends, family, or even strangers. But we must not forget that we are 
all one nation and one race, and that's the human race. Thank you very much for joining in. Don't forget, if you'd like to be a caller on the Ugly Truth podcast, please follow us on Phoenixia Productions. Uh, sorry, follow us on Instagram at Phoenixia Productions and look out for the prompts we'll be putting out daily so you can be a caller or choose a topic for me to talk about in the next episode. We love you all. Thank you and see you later. Thank you.